Wasabi guys coming back at you with another video it's void here and we have another 10 underrated cards list here to go over I really like these cards I really like a lot of what they do uh, there's some commanders on this list this time a little bit more than the other three lists here yeah a lot of these cards let me just clarify if a card is well known it doesn't mean that it's not underrated it just means that people know what it does and they still underrate it or they still don't consider it as a significantly playable card like they should be. You'll have cards on this list where it's like, oh yeah, I know I know what that card is, I know what it does, and didn't think it was that underrated, but in reality, it either doesn't see enough play as a commander or it doesn't see enough play as one of the 99 or just anything in general. There's a lot of cards on this list that you'll probably uh, think about and just, oh wow, now that, I, now that I think about it, it's actually a pretty good card. So the first one we have here is Kelderan Outpost from Alliances. I think on the first list I made, I had Soldevi Excavations. That card, very similar to this one, except that one was blue, this one's white, comes into play, you sacrifice and untap planes, and it taps for one generic and one white mana. So it's alright, it, it taps for two mana, so if it gets destroyed, you're going down two mana, but it's not really that big of a target anyway. So you pay two mana, tap it, to make a 1-1 one, one white soldier token. Very similar to Care Keep, or the, the land that uh, gets you Cobalt tokens, but those are zero ones. these are 1-1s. One in white, tokens are always good, and any time you can have that on the land, you're not always going to have... A lot to do on your turn white gets gassed out pretty quickly if you're not careful it's pretty easy to just you know sit on something like this as a blocker uh, maybe for some sort of pillow fort strategy making a token every turn isn't that bad either you know tokens aren't a huge deal but a 1-1 for a land that just sits on the field and, and does that it's kind of underrated not as good as Soldevi excavations in my opinion I, I always like uh, looking at my cards that I'm gonna draw first uh, rather than just getting 1-1s. One so it's not the most powerful land, and it's not going to be a huge consideration, but it's definitely something there if you're just looking for a land for tokens. or It's something. And then we have Michiko Kanda. Another one of those pillow fort type of strategy cards that I would definitely consider, maybe even as a commander. I think the automatic comparison here would be Phyrexian Obliterator, but He's like four black, so a little bit more flexible than Phyrexian Obliterator. However, not necessarily as powerful. Uh, obviously, if they deal damage to Phyrexian, it, you know, they sacrifice that many permanents. Whereas Michiko Kanda's just damage dealt to you. Whenever they do deal damage, they just sacrifice one permanent, so it is a bit weaker than that. However, she is a legendary creature, so she has the benefit of being a commander. Not necessarily something you want to do, though. Mono White has stuff like Ghostly Prison... Uh, you know, obviously instant speed removal to punish your opponents for trying to attack you or deal damage to you. Or While she's not a terrible option as a commander, she's better off in something like, say, uh, Queen Marchesa as a pillow fort strategy in Mardu colors or as a pillow fort in Aloro. Not fantastic, but, you know, she sits on the field, very underrated. Your opponents are going to think twice before they attack you, and especially in a four-player game, she's not a huge target, but she definitely makes your opponents think then we have Ancestral Knowledge. Two mana blue enchantment when it enters the battlefield. You look at the top 10 cards of your library and you can exile any number that you want to and put the rest on the back of the top of your library in any order. And if it were to leave the battlefield, you would have to shuffle your library and has a cumulative upkeep of one. A uh, very good card manipulation. It's always a good thing whenever you can see what's coming. And blue does that better than any other color. And this card is extremely underrated. It's one of those weather light cards that just doesn't see enough play. Uh, it's a very underrated set overall. I think this is one of those cards that I think people it doesn't it doesn't do enough for some people. While yeah, it doesn't draw you any of these cards, and it has the downside of having you know if it's removed, it shuffles your library. So that is a huge downside. But you are playing blue. So you have ways of protecting that from happening. You can counter removal if you want to. And Ancestral Knowledge, while it isn't anything like super special, uh, the main comparison here would be something like Dig Through Time because it's very similar. So you, you have the ability to look at more cards and say that you want, you want these cards on top of your library. So it can get rid of cards you don't want. Now, are you unfortunately going to be forced to exile some cards you maybe like but don't necessarily need? Yeah, sometimes you might have to, but 
when you're talking about maybe you're like land screwed or maybe you have too many lands and you just exile all the lands from the top 10 and the rest of your cards are just in a sequence of okay you're going to be drawing this many and this is how you're going to do it when you have that type of predictability of the top 10 there's a lot of cards that let you look at the top three or the top two this lets you look at the top 10 and I think that's just absolutely crazy for just a two mana enchantment that not a lot of people know about so yeah that's why it's on this list pretty underrated next we have pendril mists for those of you that don't know this is basically a four mana version of an earlier card the tabernacle at pendril veil vale, which they basically do the same thing each creature gains during your upkeep you have to pay one mana or bury it basically you know they're both the same the only difference is this is four mana in blue tabernacles just insane it's just a land that doesn't tap for mana that's it so pendril mist for four mana it is on the reserve list uh like a lot of cards from weatherlight and it's very good uh definitely something you should consider for any stacks builds but even for just control it's not terrible then we have Marrow Nar. In honor of the whole Tribal Commander 2017 decks, this is something I desperately want them to consider doing. If not this year, maybe sometime in the future. Any sort of rat tribal support, because, I mean, we desperately need it. We have a lot of cool rats, and Marrow Nar is just one of the reasons why I think... Also, a lot of people want to return to Kamigawa. This is one of my reasons, at least. A lot of the rats were cool. I mean, you're talking like Master Splinter type of cool here. Like, they were all ninjas, like samurais, you know. They're, they're fucking awesome, man. This guy is awesome. He gives all your rats fear, and you can sacrifice a rat, and you gain a number of rats equal to the total rats you control. So, it's kind of like a token generator for a deck that doesn't typically have a lot of token rats. Obviously, cards like Pack Rat, uh, Lab Rats, cards like that, uh, they, they generate a lot of rats for you. There's not too many that do that pretty efficiently you usually have to pay a lot of mana to keep it going uh they're easy to remove they're easy to deal with it's not a very versatile tribe you typically see a lot of rats and they have either something dealing with combat tricks like fear or intimidate or something like that or they have or they're like ravenous rats where they deal with hand disruption which in itself isn't bad but when it's so like you know iffy those two things aren't too terribly powerful in commander uh, especially when you have fear for, you know, smaller creatures. It's not terrible, but it's not that amazing either. But the hand disruption isn't too crazy either. Other than that, though, pretty awesome dude here. I and mean, he gives all your rats fear. I mean, obviously the best option for any rat tribal commander. So it, it's definitely one, especially mono black. I mean, pretty cool. And again, good reason to return to Kamigawa. Next we have Planar Chaos, a 3 mana red enchantment, which you do have to flip a coin each one of your upkeeps or else you sacrifice it, which, you know, is a downside, but the cool thing about it is each time a player casts a spell, they have to flip a coin, and if, it, if they lose the flip, the card gets countered. So right there you have just, I mean, if you're playing a huge multiplayer game, this is one of the most fun cards you could play because everybody's just, oh my god, I need to find a coin first of all, which is always one of the biggest things that comes up whenever you play cards with coin flip type effects. And also people are just going to be pissed off. They have to have a lot of their stuff countered if they're unlucky enough to lose the flip that many times. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's a hilarious card. It's not one that people know about. They know the set Planar Chaos, but they don't know about the card Planar Chaos. It's one of those cards from Judgment that, it's not fantastic, but in red, having that type of, you know, countering for just flipping a coin, it's very chaotic, and if you want to build a chaotic red deck, this is, this is a card that's definitely worth considering. Next we have Safi Eric's Daughter. Now we're getting to the multicolored commander options. And I absolutely love her. And it's really confusing to me because for some reason there's just not that many commander decks based around her as the commander. She's a very good for, you know, combos. I think all of her combos are pretty involved and they either do something that's unique or, you know, you don't see a lot of. And it's a graveyard based combo. Uh, works well with Carador Ghost Chieftain as your commander as well. Definitely something I don't think a lot of people know about the combos. She's pretty cool though. Uh, if you have something like a Blasting Station or if you have Altar of Dementia and you have something like maybe a Sun Titan or a Karmic Guide, you know, who knows, maybe you throw in something like a Blood Artist in there. Those are just some combo pieces there. And all you have to do is just keep sacking Safi, sack your creatures, they come back because of Safi. You know, your Karmic Guide brings back Safi, and then you just keep sacking it over and over again to something like a Blasting Station or an Altar of Dementia. 
Either way, you're going to be dealing a ton of damage to your opponent or milling them. And it's just, it's a pretty cool combo. Uh, a lot of them are pretty awesome. And I love, I love Celestia colors too. The good graveyard colors too, green and white. So definitely something to consider. I think a lot of people underrate her ability as a commander. Next, we have Lord of Tresserhorn from Alliances. Definitely uh, one of the more unknown guys. He's a zombie, technically considered a zombie. He's four mana, and he's a 10-4. Unfortunately, when he comes into play, you have to pay two life, sacrifice two creatures, and have a target opponent draw two cards. And uh, yeah, that, that's a pretty big downside, having to give up that much advantage. But once you do, you have a 10-4 on the field that has you know paid black, and you can regenerate it. And Regenerate is one of those very underrated abilities. I don't think a lot of people give it a chance. I mean, I think, yeah, there is Exiling Removal, there's Bounce Removal. To that, that makes Regenerate not that big of a deal. But, you know, there's a lot of board wipes. There's a lot of targeted removal that does destroy. So anytime, I mean, you're just paying one black to Regenerate. It's a 10-4. Voltron base decks are a huge deal in Commander. So these colors are not bad you can you know blue can give unblockable red can give haste uh black can give death touch and intimidate something like that you know a lot of options for voltron and obviously you're going to throw a ton of equipment or maybe auras on him to make him that even more intimidating but you're thinking like all you need to do is just maybe throw one or two equipment on him and suddenly you know two hits and someone's dead i mean that's pretty good when you consider you know four mana for ten power that's always going to be good value no matter what format you're in. While he's not my first option, Grix is far from it, but if you want to build more of the fun type of strategies with older commanders that may not necessarily be just overkill, he's definitely a fair commander uh, for Voltron. Gives you a lot of power, but he's usually going to be your only creature out there. And uh, you can obviously fool around with zombie type of builds, and he himself is a zombie, so maybe you want to go with old school zombie tribal. Who knows? Just something to think about. Next we have Asperia Supreme Judge uh, from Return of Ravnica. And whenever she has basically whenever an opponent attacks either you or a planeswalker you control, you draw a card for each one. Right there you have a good way to draw cards, however it's not always dependable. So mainly where I see her in is just pillow fort strategies. Just blue-white you have you know two colors that are pretty good at doing it. Throwing something like a Windborn Muse or a Ghostly Prison and a... Uh, propaganda you know those type of effects you know all around blue and white so you have something right there that's already going to give you something mainly just a pillow fort strategy I mean you're in control color so you're gonna back it up with something like that you're gonna back it up with some control as well so not too terribly powerful but it's pretty underrated and you don't really see it enough last but not least we have Karthus Tyrant of Jund now Whenever someone mentions like Dragon Tribal, they always assume Scion, and especially now that we have Dragon Tribal coming out here next month, people are underrating this guy as a commander, because honestly, Jun colors are very good for dragons already, and when you have something that can just suddenly gain control of all dragons on the field, you have something that can uh, untap all dragons, gain control of them, and give them haste, is pretty good. Obviously, I think the misconception here is people... They think that you have to be playing against other dragon decks to make it worth it, when in reality, you're just using this to make an aggressive dragon build. He's a 7-7 seven, seven with haste, so it's nothing too flashy, and obviously, I wouldn't consider it over maybe the five-color dragon that's coming out here, uh, the Ur dragon. So, you know, just more versatility there in five colors, so obviously, better options as a dragon tribal commander but i think karthus is definitely far from the worst one especially when it comes to just you know playing a good fashion just drunk just a jun color dragon you know that's what jun's known for a ton of dragons just awesomeness you know he's flying his haste he's a seven seven for seven mana so just decent value right there gaining control of your dragons even and giving them haste who knows you might be you might be playing multiple dragons that turn and giving them haste is always an awesome thing to have so you never know anyway guys that's it for this list here i uh, hope you enjoyed it like share this video void mage gamer here signing off thanks for watching you guys have a wonderful day now